G'day YouTube, welcome back to the VK8 FOS YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about UHF digital mode decoding today guys, and more specifically DMR, which stands for Digital Mobile Radio. So this is an example of a Motorola Moto Turbo DP4600E model. So this is a DMR compliant radio. Moto Turbo is the brand name for Motorola's flavor of digital mobile radio, DMR. Um, DMR is an interesting mode because it's mainly used for just like commercial operators, uh, handy talkies, walkie talkies, whatever you call them, um, radios in cars. So that's mobile ra land mobile radio service and also base stations and repeaters. It's an interesting mode because it has a capability called automatic vehicle location, AV, no, uh, yeah, AVL, I believe it's called. And what this AVL service does is it's for commercial operators to track their mobile assets, right? So it could be like a, a company car or a transport vehicle, like a truck or a train or something like that. Um, it's for these operators to track their assets. So the AVL configured radio on a mobile asset is constantly beaming its GPS coordinates, its heading in degrees, and also its speed. So, so yeah, it's pretty pretty cool service. And what I found here in the city where I live is there is a health service operator. We'll put it like that. I'll be very very non-specific here and vague because I don't want to expose this particular organisation. But they have a, a transport service where they pick up patients of this particular health service. And the van that they are using is beaming its coordinates all over the city where I live. So obviously this is a major privacy risk because this van is exposing the addresses of this of customers of this particular health service. And yeah, that's a bad thing because we can see when the vehicle is stationary outside somebody's house in the middle of a suburb, we know it's doing a pickup. So so yeah, this, that's, this is naughty. Don't try this at home. Um, you're not supposed to see this kind of stuff. But yeah, there's no, not really any encryption I've ever ran into on the DMR service here in my city. So that's good for me, being a radio guy. So I'll just go through like my hardware setup quickly. This is a uh, VHF UHF ham radio Yagi Uda antenna. It's on my rotator here, which I did a video uh, a month or two ago about that. And it's, it's tuned, it's supposed to be for ham radio, but I've tuned it to like the upper limit of ham radio so it also covers also the commercial vhf and uhf band so yeah this thing works really well despite not being that large and yeah this is the software defined radio i'm using i'm using an air spy r2 i've customized it with um some heat sinks and uh, i put a little pac-man sticker on it just i don't know why i did that because i had one lying around so yeah that's just my hardware setup and it's also connected by rg58 equivalent coaxial cable there so yeah and then on the software side my sdr front end of choice is always sdr sharp a lot of people don't like sdr sharp i like it because of the plugins and i personally think the uh dsp is superior to other uh sdr applications so when i say dsp i mean like you can clean up a signal and make a signal sound really really good um with sdr sharp compared to other front ends love it or hate it that's what i use guys so I'm also using um, DSD Plus Fastlane. Fastlane is the paid version of DSD Plus. DSD Plus is a collection of tools for Windows and also Linux where it can decode digital voice. So like P25, DMR, heaps and heaps and heaps of um, different digital voice modes. NXDN is another one, but we're just focusing on DMR. So forget about the other stuff. You don't have to use Fastlane for this. I'm just using Fastlane, that's all. Um, and what else do we have here? So we're also using um virtual, or we're using VB cable as well. So the VB cable is a virtual, it's a virtual audio cable on your computer. So instead of getting a sound card and connecting the cable to the microphone input to the speaker output or something like that, it's basically just does that virtually. So it'll pass audio from SDR Sharp to the decoding application. So that's how you do that. 
And yeah, that's all the software I'm using. So I'll just go through some of the configuration in um, SDR Sharp here. So, so yeah, I'm using my S by R2. I've just set the uh, all the RF stuff. So I've set my gain to about half. Um, I've got my sample rate as 2.5. I'm using some decimation. So decimation is a more advanced feature. A lot of you guys probably don't know what decimation is, but it basically just reduces the bandwidth of the SDR and increases the signal to noise on a received signal. That's basically how it works. I'm not a DSP or SDR engineer. Um, so I'm, the mode I'm using is narrowband FM. I've got a bandwidth of 13,000 kilo, oh, 13,000, so 13 kilohertz. I've got no squelch activated. And then I'm pointing the audio output to VB, cable a and we're using windows direct sound because m n e m m e doesn't really work with ds uh, dsd plus on my computer anyway so i'm just going to select vb cable a and then that's really all the configuration we need for sdr sharp make sure you don't have any like audio filtering going on guys so like audio noise reduction if noise reduction turn all that kind of stuff off turn your filter audio off because when you're decoding digital modes the receiving applications typically need discriminator output discriminator output is basically just raw audio with no audio processing or filtering going on it just needs the raw sound which has the data encoded into it so that's why we don't do that um and with that, when you're using DSD Plus, there's a batch file to launch it called DSD Plus.bat. And you, you have to edit this. Uh, I edit this um, docu uh, yeah, batch file. I edited it. Um, RP just stands for like passive receiving and decoding. So we're not doing like any trunk tracking or anything like that. Trunk Trunking is for like what? the police and public services use. Um, we're not interested in that. We're just looking at a single DMR signal and we just need to receive it passively. So I've put hyphen RP just for passive mode receiving. And then this bit's a little bit tricky. So you have to configure your audio files, so, uh, your audio devices. So I is your input audio device and output is where the decoded voice traffic will appear from so we're not going to worry about voice but yeah i've got i3 which is my vb cable a okay so sdr sharp is going to send audio to this application here on audio device number three so i've got i3 there and then my output i just is just my speakers on my computer so if there is voice traffic, it will be decoded and then come out come out of my computer speakers, if that makes sense. Okay, I know this stuff is very technical for you non-radio people, but hey, I'm trying to explain it as simple as possible for you. So that's about it, I think. So yeah, we've just got we've just configured our DSD plus batch file. We just go save. And as you can see, I've already started um, DSD plus. So if you guys haven't done so already, you just uh, you just launch your batch file here. So I've already done that. I'm gonna turn on my software defined radio now by pressing the start button here. And then we should, there we go. I just had to press a button. So yeah, we're receiving DMR packets at the moment. So that's all we need to do now. So now with the vehicle tracking thing now, we need to go to your DSD plus folder and then we need to locate something called LLRP. And this application will point, put will decode the AVL traffic. So the coordinates of a vehicle that is currently the radio is transmitting its coordinates and everything. And then it will over, uh, uh, put the pin on a map and we can actually track where the vehicle's going. So if you just scroll down to through the folder and we just locate llrp.exe, I've already opened it. So I've got the map and everything already open. 
It opens also um, this terminal window as well, but we don't need that. We just need this here. So if we press, so we, we've already got a couple of vehicles on the road here, or one vehicle with an ID of 110. So if we press the question mark, we've got a list of, um, we've got a list of like, Key, keyboard shortcuts to configure the map program. So we are going to, what I always do is I decrease the max age by pressing the bracket. Was it close bracket? Uh, yeah. What's that? An open bracket there. So I've already done that. Oh, no, sorry. We go, yeah, close bracket. And you can see at the top here, it's saying max age is one minute. So after one minute, that particular GPS coordinate it logged will disappear and we can just get where the vehicle is at that time as it moves across the map. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go auto zoom, which is the uh, auto zoom is the Z key. So I'm going to close the uh, help menu and then I'm going to press Z. Then now we are actually live tracking a vehicle now. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, it'll update, I don't know, every couple of seconds kind of thing, um, when it needs to. So we can currently see that the vehicle is in motion, uh, driving down a particular road in the city where I live. And we've got some information down here in this event log window. So if I actually open this up a little bit, we can see the L... L, uh, with the AVL information being listed here. So we've got GPS coordinates, we've got a speed, and we've got a heading. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So we'll just let that run for a while, and I'll just, yeah, show you guys how uh, what it's actually doing under the hood. So if anyone's not familiar with uh, SDR radio, so this is the uh, FFT, which stands for Fast Fourier Transform, and that's basically just a dig... Uh, uh, a pretty thing that human eyes can look at that represents a signal in like tr being received by my antenna. And this is called the waterfall here. Um, so obviously this is time. It's like the time axis because you can see the signal starting and stopping. And yeah, that's, and obviously, you know, this thing here at the bottom, that's called a noise floor. Uh, yeah. And then this signal here is like what I call the signal spike. So yeah, we can see that this is just normal background radiation here. And then we have this nice pronounced spike at a frequency of 468.762.5. So yeah, that's that's really cool. And yeah, you can see here that, you know, the, the vehicle is currently traveling along this road and the map will just follow that infinitely. You can zoom in and out um, using the plus and minus key. So we can zoom right out. And then you just press Z again to go back to the tracking. So... And then, yeah, obviously, when you see the speed stop to zero or something, they're obviously stationary. And then you'll see the speed quickly ramp up 22 kilometers here, and then it's sped up to 41 kilometers. So, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting thing. I've never actually ran into this AVL service before. So I was just looking around yesterday, poking around in the dark, looking for DMR signals, and then f saw that this particular service is using AVL. So, yeah, massive privacy risk because they're not using any encryption and it's exposing the addresses of clients that are when the vehicle's stationary stopping in the middle of a suburb so yeah it's pretty pretty wiring to say the least but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that video that's just a quick rundown on dsd if you guys want a tutorial on how to actually listen to voice which we're not doing here just let me know in the comments thanks very much for watching bye